Tommy V in Michigan. He was on fire this morning. Hey, thank you, Tommy V in Michigan. Th that, yes, sir. If you, if you share my prayers. Mm -hmm. my Tommy V's on. Yeah, we'll jump over there. Tommy V doing great stuff over there. Uh, 06162835. This is Ford Motor Credit Company versus uh, Bertha Buchanan. But the matter is before the court on the following of objections to a writ of garnishment. The record should reflect uh, in this matter uh, that pursuant to the, uh, the register of action, a judgment was renewed in this matter on the 15th of March of 2017. Uh, that judgment amount is $3,168. That was a renewal of the original uh, judgment. And uh, that is the basis upon which a writ of garnishment has been issued, indicating that the judgment has not been satisfied. Your appearance for Ford Motor Credit Company, please. Good morning, Your Honor. Robin Stradowski on behalf of Ford Motor Credit Company, P number 71195. Uh, thank you, Madam Counsel. Good morning uh, to you. I'm looking now for Bertha Buchanan. Uh, if you're on the Zoom, please say something at this time, Ms. Buchanan. I do see you there, Ms. Buchanan. Can you, are you able to say good morning? I, I am. I'm here. Can All right. Thank you. Ms. I, I, I'm here. Thank you. Good morning to you, Ms. Buchanan. I do see that you filed objections indicating that the judgment has been paid uh, and that the writ uh, is not properly issued or otherwise invalid because the garnishment was issued on false information uh, because the judgment amount is inaccurate, also unable to tell which writ. Uh, etc. All right. Um, so it looks like this has to do with that judgment that was previously entered. You have a satisfaction of judgment. You said that it's already paid. Um, yes, uh, Judge, Your Honor. Uh, um, I was looking at the amount. The amounts are uh, incorrect on here uh, because you're saying that uh, in 2018. When uh, they originally, they originally said that I only owed like five thousand dollars or something, and I paid over forty six hundred dollars on this account. All right. Well, uh, one of the things that could be a problem here is that this judgment has been around for uh, like almost twenty years, and uh, uh, interest has been accruing on it. So let me hear from the other side to see what's going on here, Madam Counsel. Uh, uh, what's your insights regarding this matter, please? <laughs> your Honor, you you are correct when you said that the interest accruing on this account is what causes the balance to be higher in this case. She has not made consistent payments on this. She has not made any voluntary payments since 2019 in this case. Um, we um, There is a valid balance that's owing in this account currently for $3,718.74. There is a 13% interest that's been accruing in this account. Um, I would be willing to work something out with her as far as a payment arrangement that if she keeps up that we can reduce or stop the interest. But at this point, there is no valid objection to garnishment. Yeah, that's what it seems like. I, I figured that that was the, the problem here is that you've got that high interest rate that's accruing on this judgment. And uh, with that kind of problem, you're probably never going to uh, uh, be able to get this taken care of unless you uh, come up with some type of arrangement to do so. Uh, uh, Council for Ford Motor Credit, Yes. Well, you can show me all kind of paperwork. The problem is that you have a judgment against you. And if you don't have a satisfaction of that judgment, that means that interest is still accruing on it. Even though you paid money over time, uh, the fact of the matter is that a 13% interest, I mean, you know, you have a hard time paying that off even if you paid money unless you uh, uh, unless you paid eight or nine or ten thousand dollars on it because that's what it's going to accrue to over that significant period of time. So uh, maybe uh, the two of you I, I talk- I over 7,000. I had paid over, uh, on the original, it had it was up to 7,000 and I paid it down to uh, 5,000. And my last payment on this account was in 20, up until COVID. 
up until COVID of, uh, of, of 2020. So I have been paying consistently. Now, when the judgment came down and I had to surrender the car because I had to take care of my parents, I didn't. And I had to uh, take care of my parents until they passed away in 2016. So I wasn't working and I didn't make any payments. So I do understand the $4,000 worth of interest. And that interest was uh, tacked on, uh, on, and I had the paperwork where it was. But once they took uh, the initial almost $2,000 worth of taxes, once I got back into the work field, and plus I started paying on it in 2018 all the way to 2020, and my last payment was $366, which was uh, in August of 2020. And, you know, COVID was still, uh, it had started then. So once I got back into the work world after my parents passed away, I consistently paid on this account. And I have all the paperwork here to prove it. I just didn't know how to submit it. All right, yeah. yeah. With 13% interest for 20 years, uh, 18 years, um, you, this is why you still have a, uh, that's why you still have a balance. That's the problem. Uh, and uh, I, I assure you that that's the problem. Now, what, uh, sure, what I will order. To now, how can I what, help you? What I will order that the, uh, the plan of do is to give you an accounting to show all of what they received as far as payments and to uh, and to uh, show what their uh, calculation of interest, uh, the interest balance is uh, regarding this. But right now, uh, everything suggests that there is still a balance and with, with there being a balance, there is the right uh, to uh, to utilize the garnishment as a way of collecting the balance on this judgment. Uh, you always have a problem when there's something that lingers for almost 20 years, especially when you have a debt that has um, uh, an interest rate that is, that's at 13%. That's a lot uh, for a number of years. And that's going to make that amount just keep growing and growing. It's, it's hard to keep up with 4% interest at 13% uh, over 18 years. That's going to be a real problem. So uh, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to order that they give you an accounting, that they lay out exactly what they've collected and how it's been applied to the judgment, uh, as well as what, uh, what the uh, interest accrual uh, has been on this. And you'll have an opportunity to address those issues when you receive that. In the meantime, there is, uh, uh, there is an outstanding balance, and therefore, they have the right to, uh, uh, to uh, garnish your wages. Are you working, working for human capital concepts? Is that what, what's going on? Right. So, 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 what is the amount? I, I don't need you. I, I don't need you talking about the other stuff right oh, okay. now. Okay. So you say uh, human capital, yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, you, you probably need to see if there's a way for you to talk about this to come up with some type of payment arrangement, so you're not dealing with the current the garnishment. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you in a breakout room with uh, uh, with counsel to see if the two of you can talk about this. Okay. Um, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to give uh, 30 days for that uh, for the uh, accounting to be supplied to you. Uh, so that has to be uh, you have to uh, get that by the uh, by the 22nd of July. By July 22nd, they'll give you documents uh, indicating the accounting to show you what they've collected, how they've applied it, and what the uh, uh, what the remaining balance is on this uh, on this uh, document. Well, I should say on the on this judgment, and then I'll set it for. Um, um, I think I gave you. I, I, I think I said July. Actually, the date on this should be the twenty sixth of June, June twenty sixth, June twenty sixth. All right, and I'll I'll um, um, I'll hear the matter. Uh, I'll hear the matter on July the eighth. Now, if you can work something out today. That'll stop the garnishment. Otherwise, the garnishment will remain in place until that time. So let me give you a moment in the breakout room uh, to uh, to see if you can uh, reach an accommodation. Uh, Thank so you, I'm sending, I'm sending you a notification in that regard. And if we do come up with an agreement or when we send her the payment history that she understands what the balance is, will we still be coming back on July 8th? Well, uh, if you come up with something, come back into the courtroom. Okay. okay. And I'll address that. Uh, if, okay. if not, then uh, the garnishment will remain in place, and the dates uh, have already been given to you for the, uh, the upcoming hearings. All right. Okay. If it works, thank I'll you. come back at the court. Okay. Right. Thank you. Good day to both sides. Did you get right. those dates? 
If we are not able to come to any agreement, do you want us to just log off then? Uh, yeah, you can just log off and that you've got to be back on July um, uh, July the 8th at 9.30, come back into the same Zoom. That's 7, okay. 8, 9.30, the same Zoom. And okay. that, uh, that just uh, regarding uh, the uh, accounting is due by the 24th of June. Okay, thank you. The court now is calling case number 23155766. This is Comerica Bank versus Park of Davis. The matter uh, is before the court, uh, looks like on a petition to set aside uh, entry of a default uh, in this matter. Uh, your appearance for Comerica Bank, please. Your Honor, good morning. Christopher Sassen, spelled S-O-S-S-O-N-G, P59383, appearing on behalf of the plaintiff. Thank you, Mr. Sassen. Good morning uh, to you, sir. Uh, I'm looking now for Sparkle Davis. If you are on the Zoom, please say something at this time. Yes, I'm here. All right. Good morning to you, Ms. Davis. Good morning. All right. I see that uh, you filed a petition uh, uh, to have a, a default that was entered in this matter uh, set aside, uh, and you indicated just one moment. Uh, yeah, you sent uh, you sent a note to me uh, indicating that uh, that you had no knowledge of the, uh, the data that there was fraudulent activity on your account, something along this line. What what, right. what is it? What is the base upon which you believe that the judgment should be set aside? Because the my first off my card was like missing and I'm obviously got stolen. If somebody was able to do this transactions and all this other stuff that I wasn't aware of. And I, I'm steady getting alerts. That's why I made copies of all the alerts I got, all the notifications and gave it to you. Like everything that came to me is what I saw. And when I tried to reach out, like nobody was trying to talk to me. It's like they kept passing me up, like put me on hold, talking to this person, put me on hold, talking to that person. And it was just no good communication. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm getting charged for what? All right. So let me ask you this. Why didn't you respond to the complaint when it was filed against you? You said response to the complaint? Yeah. Yeah. They, they, but, uh, a lawsuit was filed against you. Uh, and uh, that was uh, uh, that was served on you back in uh, November of 2023. And, uh, That's the thing. I'm sorry to cut you off. I wasn't never. I was never served because I didn't stay there. It was served. It, it probably got sent to that address. I did, I wasn't staying there. I didn't have a car. I had no way to go over there to pick up my mail. When I finally was able to pick up my mail, that's when I saw like oh. You know, like, what is this? And then that's when I got my information on, like, my evidence to, because I would have been, like, this would have been settled. Wow. I have an affidavit from process server indicating that you were served. And moreover, you, you're, still, you're still using, uh, you're still using that address. That's what's on my ID. I don't use that address, though. Because it's just um, the apartment. I don't plan on like, and that's my family place. So yeah. I feel safe with my mail going there. The thing is, is that if you open that address out there, that's the reason why you're going to get served there and ultimately uh, going to get a judgment against you. Um, so when did you first find something out about this uh, about this case being in court? When did you find that out, ma'am? This year, this February, like, in the, after like the last, like a little bit, probably a week after the last uh, court thing they put on me in February because I was ready like to go and then I realized oh dang I missed it and then that's when I went to the court and asked them like you know what is this like what's going on and they gave me all the paperwork I needed and she said as long as you can you know pro provide your documents and you know we can figure out something well uh, whoever told you that they don't know what they're talking about but that's let me hear from the other side this is awesome thank you your honor uh, Your Honor, it is plaintiff's position uh, that the defendant has failed to articulate and demonstrate a showing as required by Court Rule MCR 2.603D, uh, a showing of both good cause and a meritorious defense. First, as the court noted, 
The defendant was personally served with a summons and complaint on November 18th of 2023 at 4.34 p.m. Uh, that is, uh, as the court noted, attested to by the process server. And that is, as the court also noted, the very same address the defendant is utilized in her pleadings. Uh, so that address is consistent uh, through the present date uh, uh, with the defendant's residency. Uh, there's no uh, there's no really factual reasonableness to contend that the address where the defendant was served was inaccurate, uh, given that point. Second, uh, the defendant in her motion fails to articulate good cause or reason why she failed to file an answer to the complaint. The summons that the defendant was served with is very clear and sets forth what action a defendant must take after being served. Uh, third, uh, a default request and entry was sought uh, and served on the defendant on December 27th of 2023. Uh, that def that default entry was served on the defendant on December 27th, 2023. Again, at the very same address, the defendant took no action uh, to contest or set aside the default when the default entry was, was entered by the court on that date. Subsequently, plaintiff then sought entry of default judgment uh, after the default was entered against the defendant and the court entered the default judgment on February 1st of 2024. And the default judgment then was served on the defendant on February 1 of 2024. Uh, my point is that there were multiple mailings and opportunities giving notice to the defendant that uh, a default was entered, a judgment was entered uh, for the defendant to have taken timely action to seek to set aside uh, this default judgment if she would particularly a meritorious defense to the claim. Uh, it is plaintiff's position that the defendant has failed to articulate a meritorious defense to the claim. The defendant acknowledged that she had an account, but contends uh, that that some of the, that the charges to the account may, may be um, uh, uh, the source of criminal acti activity, i.e. fraudulent. However, in support of her motion to set aside the default judgment, Defendant doesn't attach or or reference to any if if the uh, source of the uh, the amount or the balance is criminal in nature or potentially criminal in nature. The defendant doesn't attach uh, any police report or or any indication that she contacted the authorities as it relates to potentially fraudulent or uh, criminal charges uh, or criminal activity that that is the source of the balance. So, Your Honor. For all those reasons, it is plaintiff's position that she's failed to articulate the necessary two-prong uh, requirement of good cause and meritorious defense to set aside the default judgment that was entered on February 1 of 2024. And accordingly, plaintiff would respectfully request that the court deny her motion and allow the default judgment uh, that was entered on February 1 of 2024 to remain in place. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, counsel. All right, all right ma'am. Anything else you want to tell me at this time? I mean, my whole thing is, like I said, I provided the documents. Like, I didn't know y'all wanted phone records that I caught them a thousand times. Like, I feel like, y'all, yeah, they didn't do what they did, was supposed to do on their part. And all of a sudden, it falls back on me because they didn't do what they were supposed to do. So that's kind of, like, unfair. And at the end of the day, you keep talking about this address. I don't stay there like okay maybe you didn't know but at the end of the day if obviously i'm not responding it's kind of common sense like oh you know maybe she not getting it. and both of my grandparents there are going through dementia like they like can't tell me nothing so it's like how would i know like this is crazy all right thank you ma'am but what's really crazy is that if you're going to use a, an address uh where you receive mail and where contact can be made with you is that you don't check on that mail on a regular basis so that you will know uh, if there is something that is some action that is being raised against you. I frankly think that there are two things that have to be established here. Uh, one is that uh, is that there is good cause for not answering time. That's the big deal. 
Uh, I, I understand that uh, Ms. Uh, Davis talks about how she was contacting the bank. I don't have anything to do with that. None of that uh, matters uh, to this court. Mm -hmm. Can I filed, say something? Uh, no, you can't say anything. No. Uh, once you file something with the court, once something is filed in court, that's what then matters. Ultimately, it may come up that that uh, there was uh, some uh, discussions that were occurring before. But once something is filed with the court, you have to respond to court process. You don't respond to court process. Then I have uh, certain rules that are invoked that I have to deal with. I have to deal with what those rules say. And the rules say that, number one, if you're going to get a default set aside, you have to show that there is good cause uh, for not responding to uh, the complaint or not responding to the process. There was a there was a complaint served. There was a default served. There was a default judgment, all sent to the address that we've been talking about, and not until uh, not until this uh, uh, default judgment is entered and has been entered for some time is there any action taken on the part of the uh, defendant uh, to undo it. That's the first part of the problem. The first part of the problem is, is 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 there is there good cause? Is there a good reason why there was a delay in responding to process? I have to answer that question based upon the factual scenario that is given to me. And no, there wasn't. Now, does there appear, does there, you, you put your hand all over your head if you want to. Uh, none of that, none of that. I don't have any. a car, I didn't have a car. Like Hello? 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 You know, oftentimes, the, the critical key to, to not understanding what your requirements are is using more of your lips than you use of your ears. Uh, not listening. That's a critical problem here. It appears to me that the defendant may very well uh, have raised a meritorious defense that uh, that the court would consider along the way, but she hasn't met the test of showing good cause why she did not timely respond. That's a problem here, and she can always file another motion. But I don't. I don't see where she's shown that there's good cause for not responding, number one, to the complaint, number two, to the default entry, number three, to the entry of the default judgment. It is months later before she ever responds. And for that reason, uh, the motion will be denied. As she does seem to have, uh, she does seem to have something that she could raise by way of her claim uh, that there, that she gave banks some notification that there may have been fraudulent activity. She should raise that, uh, but she can't even get to that issue unless she meet the problem to show that there is uh, a, a good basis for why she did not timely respond to the complaint. And I listen very carefully. I'm, 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 I tried to listen to, to hear from her why she did not timely uh, respond. Our, our, our primary excuse is that, well, I used that address, but I didn't get over there to, uh, to get the address. And then uh, she interrupted me to tell me that she don't have a car. But that doesn't give good cause for not responding timely. Nothing under the rules will allow that. Uh, and again, she may have something in the way of, of a meritorious defense, although she's filed no affidavit to support the same. For that reason, I have to deny the motion uh, in this matter. And the reason I took some time to really think about this uh, in the way that I have is because obviously, if someone fraudulently uh, used her account, uh, then obviously that's something that should be investigated. And, uh, and the bank or nobody else wants to be collecting money from someone where uh, where someone fraudulently took action against him. So I was trying to get to the bottom of that uh, in this, but I can't even get to that without her. I mean, she had to take some action on her own part. You know, she takes six months or, or so to respond to uh, the complaint uh, because she says that that's the address that she uses for mail that she don't live. Well, that does, that's not good cause. All right. So the motion, is, the motion will be denied. The judgment will remain in place. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Have a good day. Yeah.